I'm Sam from Cultaholic, and this is Graded for Friday Night Smackdown, where I take a look at the show segment by segment and award each little bit of grade from A plus to F. It's a great Smackdown this week with a lot of character development going on and some sterling matches as well. So without any further ado, let's crack on with it. Hit the intro. <laughs> So we kick things off this week with Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns coming to the ring. And Heyman goes through all of his usual spiel before inviting Jay Uso down to the ring. Uso tells Heyman, you know what, you go way back with my family. You're all good with me. Thank you so much for that opportunity last week. And Heyman cuts him off. He's like, no, it wasn't my idea. It was Roman's idea, but he does it in this really snivelly way where he's like, no, the person you need to thank for this golden opportunity is, and Heyman's like, properly like sucking up to Roman. Roman then tells Jay that, you know what, the whole family is so proud of you. I am so proud of you for securing a main event match in a pay-per-view, but that doesn't matter because I'm gonna whoop your butt when it comes to Clash of Champions because the belt needs to stay here on my shoulder for the benefit of our family. Corbin then comes out and he runs Roman down for nepotism. He's like, how dare you just go and hand an opportunity like that to your cousin. Seamus comes out and he's like, you know what? I agree with you. And then Jey Uso gets a little bit too big for his boots and he decides let's have a tag match. So it's uh, the blood versus butt mud. That's what he says. Uh, He then takes it to both of them, laying them out and Roman just stands there kind of smirking. I'm going to give this promo a B. I thought it was really interesting to see this level of groveliness on display from Paul Heyman. I also thought Jay looked great here. He's going to be over as hell once Roman steamrolls him into oblivion at Clash of Champions. God, he's going to be such a good baby face. We then go backstage to the production truck and the vision mixers having an absolute nightmare with Sami Zayn. Sami's like, come on, man, what do you mean? And he's pointing at a screen and he's like, why doesn't this say Intercontinental Champion? And then he starts just hammering buttons and the vision mixer's like, no, don't press anything. And it just cuts to an advert. Next up, we've got Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles in an Intercontinental Championship match. And Sami Zayn pretty much immediately interrupts before the match even gets underway. He's like, no, like, no, stop, okay, just pack it in. Like, this is ridiculous. I am the IC champion. I'm back now. You can't be having matches for a belt that I never lost. And then Adam Pearce and security have to come out and they're like, come on. Let's let's lead you away. <laughs> However, this distraction allows AJ to jump Jeff, but that doesn't really matter because Jeff then goes straight for the twist of fate, nails it, goes for the swanton and misses. Things spill to the floor with AJ being bounced off the ring steps. Back in the ring, Jeff continues the onslaught. He even hits Whisper in the Wind. But it's just not enough. AJ starts to ramp up his offense. He starts to bring it and he starts to target that bad knee. And then just as AJ has Jeff banged to right, he's about to go for the forearm. Literally just about goes for it. Sammy then jumps the ring, beats both of them down, matches a DQ. Sammy then sprints off with his belt, still the Intercontinental Champion in his mind. And then as Jeff's leaving the ring he gets halfway up the ramp and then collapses and they put this down to dehydration but yeah there's then a little super quick backstage segment here with AJ just wanting to put a stop to all of the nonsense he's like I just want the belt I want to just have this all done with it's getting ridiculous now I'm gonna give this one a B it was a really nice match for what it was for the length and for how it ended between these two guys and I think that we forget they do have a lot of chemistry together Jeff especially with that hot start looked great but I really love this thing that's starting to mount now AJ Styles every week gets close to having what he wants and then somehow it just becomes crazier and crazier and crazier and now he's just done he's over it he just wants his belt That is it. Then we go backstage to the Champions Lounge, Cesaro and Nakamura's little hangout spot that they defend quite strictly. And in walk, the Street Profits. And Cesaro and Nakamura are quite confused as to why they're there. They're like, what are you doing here? And they're like, well, you said we could stop by and all of this stuff. And, you know, it's definitely not to get in their heads at all, of course. But, um, yeah, they're like, what are you doing here? We've got a match. This isn't a great time. And and then they just go, okay, well, we're just going to hang out here. You go... You go have your match. 
There's then another super quick backstage bit here that I'm not going to put a picture up for, but Jeff is in the doctor's office. Sammy jumps in to get another couple of cheap shots on him, and Jeff decks him. And then we go to Cesaro and Nakamura versus the Lucha House Party, who this week are represented by Kalisto and Grand Metalik, but Lince's there, and he's at ringside. Metalik and Cesaro start things off with Cesaro getting hurled around the ring by just next level, next level crazy Lucha stuff that only Grand Metalik is capable of. Kalisto then gets in, runs with it, but then gets stopped dead by Nakamura and then he's dragged into the corner isolated and the heels start working him over and then the Street Profits come on the Tron they're still in the Champions Lounge except they've invited a load of people in there they're throwing a massive party people are stood around with drinks there's snacks still it's just not what Nakamura and Cesaro want so they're just like oh no what's happening getting distracted and Kalisto is able to get a cheeky roll up and pick up the win I'm going to give this one a C plus simply because we didn't see that much but what we did see which is why it gets the plus that was weird c and c but what we did see this is why it gets the plus is just 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 the the relationship between these guys in the ring is just great it was sterling sterling work i liked what i saw we just didn't see a lot of it i must add as well there was a picture in picture promo during one of the entrances i think in which lucha house party were just talking over their chances and standard picture in picture stuff you know we're gonna win the match Except Kalisto calls himself, quite definitively, the leader of the Lucha House Party. And Lince clearly takes umbrage with this. He doesn't quite fully roll his eyes, but it's like a bit of a... Like a nah. And then we get another mega quick backstage bit with Lucha House Party going into the Champions Lounge and celebrating with Street Profits and everyone else. And now it's time for Bailey's sit-down in-ring promo. Why did you do it, Pamela? She comes down to the ring, she grabs a steel chair, and she sits dead center looking at hard cam. I'm just going to paraphrase what she said, but I'll read it out for accuracy because my brain is terrible. Um, so she shows a recap video of her and Sasha's implosion. And then she says, do you think I felt good having to do that? to my tag team partner and best friend and there's a long hanging silence and she goes ding dong yes i did so she says i loved every second uh she says you all want answers but really i am just full of questions she knows what sasha's up to she was going to attack bailey and she was going to try and take all that glory for herself she was just getting jealous uh she wasn't bailey's friend and she was just using bailey but how does she know that well she knows that because she was using banks and then she calls her useless she makes her exit and as she's walking up the ramp Nikki Cross's music hits there's a bit of a stare down with Bailey looking at her because the next match is to determine a number one contender I'm gonna give this one a B plus because for how hokey I felt Bailey was becoming as a heel this tiny little thing her just turning on Sasha has completely completely flipped me the other way I absolutely love serious angry heel Bailey I really like the conviction in her eye when she was talking I like that the promo served no real purpose other than for her to spread her own rhetoric and to make up lies and just be horrible and just be a heel. I feel like it for sure could have been maybe a little bit more definitive, but that's probably a promo we're going to see a little bit further down the line. So for this one, like an entry level rehealing of Bailey, I guess, or reestablishing of Bailey as a proper, proper heel, this was. Yeah, it was great. It wasn't it wasn't fantastic, but it was great. So next, we have a number one contenders match for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship, and it pits Tamina against Alexa Bliss, against Lacey Evans, against Nikki Cross. And how am I? Ten years. Ten years she's given to the company, and Tamina gets a job as entrance. She's already in the ring, and she gets a name slate. That's ridiculous. But I'm just going to run down the main beats of the match because it's a four-way and it's pretty mental. Nikki and Alexa are quickly sent to the floor. Lacey ties Tamina up in the ropes and then she gets dropped by Bliss, who's back in the ring, and she's come out swinging. Tamina seems to just bring every little phase of the early part of this match to a close because she just keeps cleaning house. Nikki, though, she's a bit wiry, but she's the only one that's able to make a dent in Tamina. And then things spill to the outside and Alexa starts to behave quite strangely. We have Tamina and Lacey on the floor. Bliss is looking at them like she's going to do something, but instead she turns around. She walks away. She allows Nikki to hit her crossbody as they're getting back up to wipe them out. And then cool as a cucumber, Alexa goes to Nikki, picks her up, takes her right in front of the commentary desk, and hits her with a sister Abigail. So obviously this is huge, and especially because what happens next is it's shown again, and then you realize that commentary said fiend, Alexa starts to behave weirdly, she hits the sister Abigail, and then in a trance, 
she just sort of walks to the back as if she was a zombie. So now I guess Alexa forfeited her position in the match. It's a triple threat. Nikki is out cold and Tamina and Lacey start going back and forth with Lacey almost picking up the win until Nikki gets back in there and puts a stop to it. Nikki then does something awesome. She has them both in opposite corners before she grabs Tamina into a bulldog position and starts moving toward Lacey who's stumbling out of the corner. She then hits the bulldog but it looks like both of them collide heads in midair and it wipes them out. I thought that was a really cool move. And it's not long after that that she's able to just roll up Tamina and pick up the win and I'm going to give this match a B plus. I thought it was a little bit rough around the edges but that just sort of comes with the territory of fatal four-way matches. They're always a little bit stop start but now we have this massive massive explosion with Alexa Bliss hitting sister Abigail on her best mate. Oh, like, is he in her head? Is he actually in there? Is he possessing her or has he hypnotized her in some way? I guess we're going to find out over the coming months, but this, this could be something unreal. Next up, we have Otis with Tucker at ringside versus John Morrison with Miz at ringside. So this one's pretty much an excuse for Morrison to do flips because Otis is just turning him inside out and he's just flipping and bouncing and rolling all around the ring as only John Morrison can. Morrison gets a little bit of offense in, but Otis hulks up, eventually hitting the Caterpillar and the Vader Bomb to pick up the win. But the problem here is that the Miz, knowing that Morrison messed up last week in his plan to steal the briefcase, but he found out that was actually the lunchbox, and then Otis revealed that he keeps the contract in the lunchbox, Miz runs off with the lunchbox. So Miz has stolen the money in the bank contract that Otis keeps inside of his lunchbox. And then we go to like a little promo backstage. Tucker is worrying. He's like, oh man, what are we going to do? He's stolen the contract. And oh, and Otis is like, yeah, it's in the lunchbox. But I didn't say which lunchbox. And he opens his suitcase, which is also his lunchbox, to reveal that inside that suitcase, which is his lunchbox, is a lunchbox, and that's the lunchbox with the contract in it. We then smash cut to Miz, and he opens it, and he pulls out a rotting apple core, and he looks a bit sad. But it doesn't end there, because Miz is like, you know what, I've got to call in a favor, and he rings somebody, so clearly, Miz has a plan. And then it's time for Firefly Funhouse, and Bray welcomes us, and he's like, you know what, it's just not the same. It just feels like something's missing in the Funhouse, and he's obviously referring to his belt. It's all Roman Reigns' fault, standard stuff. He says to not despair though, because the new addition he'd promised to the Funhouse is in a box next to Huskus, and there's this huge cylindrical hat box. And he goes over to it and he reveals that Pascal the Parrot is gonna be the new addition. He opens the box and then he's a bit shocked and then he has a bit of a giggle and he's like, well, maybe I should have put some air holes in the box. So we get a technical difficulty screen while they're dealing with things. And then when we come back to the fun house, the Vince puppet emerges. So the Vince puppet runs Bray down. He's like, first you lost the title, then you lost the parrot, and now you've lost my trust. He says, you know what, if you can't run the fun house on your own, then maybe, maybe I'm going to have to give you a special advisor. And then the real addition to the Firefly fun house is revealed, and it's a Paul Heyman-esque wobbly walrus. The Vince puppet chimes in with this is such good bleep and then Bray feigns this whole oh no what am I gonna do face and I love this. I really love this and I'm gonna give it a B. I was part of the camp that thought firmly that this was gonna be Alexa but I'm so happy that they've chosen not to especially with the sister Abigail earlier in the night I was like oh maybe but I think this is the best for everyone because this means we can extend the Alexa storyline outwards we can make it last as long as possible and we've got a new puppet that we're gonna have a lot of fun with and then finally we have the tag match that was set up at the start of the show we have Sheamus and Corbin taking on Roman Reigns and Jey Uso except Roman Reigns it's nowhere to be seen. The heels jump him during his entrance and he manages to keep them at bay for a little bit and then Corbin hits a deep six and the floodgates are wide open. Sheamus and Corbin then just take turns tagging and beating him down and then whenever he tries to hulk up or tries to make any sort of comeback or he tries to even get himself away by shoving himself along the floor, they'll re-isolate him, they'll tag and they'll continue beating him down. And then Sheamus has Uso banged to rights. He's got him lined up for the broke kick. He's about to go for it. And that is when Roman Reigns' music hits. Uso then cleans house, takes care of Sheamus, takes care of Corbin, goes for the splash. But Roman makes a blind tag on him. Roman goes in, hits the spear and picks up the win. Roman Reigns stole the victory from his cousin and his cousin didn't even want 
to, to take that away from him because he loves him that much and because the family means that much to him. He just went, okay, man, you get that win. Jay didn't seem to be bothered by any of this. Like when they're making their exit up the ramp, Jay even lifts Roman's hand while it's holding the title. And then Roman just pulls his hand away from him and looks at him. And that is when Jay's like, like what's going on here? This gets an A minus. What a heel Roman Reigns is shaping up to be. This is great. I love that he left his cousin high and dry, getting tenderized ahead of their match. This is just, ah. Oh. But in terms of an overall grade for SmackDown this week, I'm gonna give it a B minus. I feel like it was a really strong week, all things considered, and there was a little bit of everything on the card for viewers at home. I'll just run down some of my highlights here. The Alexa Shock, the Bailey promo, and the main event, they were the three for me that stood out this week. The addition of the Heyman figure, of course, how could I forget that as well? The addition of the Heyman figure in the Funhouse is quite intriguing, and I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. Should they ever come face to face? What would happen if Paul Heyman enters a world where there's a character based on him? Does Heyman become that character? We're gonna have to find out. But this has been graded for Friday Night Smackdown. I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend. Let me know what you thought about the show in the comments below. But as always, stay safe and I'll see you soon.